and we are the nonprofits by Dennis Lube, Jim Barrow, and Kevin Stein. Once upon a time, three friends wanted to broadcast an atheist message to the world. Where shall we do it from? asked Dennis. How about the Free Thought Library in Austin, Texas? said Jim. But when? he mused. I think the 12th of January, 2020, would be perfect, said Kevin, and everyone agreed. But we don't know how, Jim cried. I know someone who can help, said Dennis. It's a nonprofit educational organization for the promotion of positive atheism and the separation of church and state. That's weirdly specific, observed Jim hesitantly. What's it called? The Atheist Community of Austin, said Dennis. If you want to learn more, you can call their voicemail at 512-220-6561 or visit their website at www.atheist-community.org. The other two friends looked at each other and said, Okay, and everyone agreed. Maybe we should do this every day, blurted Kevin. The other two friends looked at each other. Uh... Perhaps we might cut that back to every first and third Sunday of each month, suggested Jim. When we can, he added, earning him a sharp glare from the others. How about six to seven central time, Kevin suggested. That sounds good, said Dennis. We can even tell them to follow the directions at www.nonprofitsradio.com and visit the chat room, he continued. The others looked at each other. www.nonprofitsradio.com, asked Kevin. Chat room, added Jim. Dennis avoided their eyes. All they'll have to do is sit back and enjoy the show, I guess. And everyone agreed. Nice. Okay. <laughs> that was a good little story there. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> we needed some cookies and milk, though. <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did. C cookies and milk would have been better for that story. Yeah. Oh, man. It's been a while. <sighs> Yeah. It's been a good while. Welcome. Thank you. Too many weeks. No, more than two. Yes. Yeah. Jim, <laughs> Four um, many weeks. This is your first time on here, yes. if I'm not mistaken. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, who a are you? special guest. I'm Jim. Um, I'm a host on Atheist Vanguard and a member of the ACA. Right on. So. And you also host the Philosophy Nights here. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. cool. How's that been? Um... It, we, we do actually pretty well. We get uh, anywhere from 5 to 15 people, depending on the night and probably the topic. Um, we do the uh, Crash Course in Philosophy, um, watch an episode of that, and then talk about it. And we're coming up to the end of that, and we're probably going to do something different for after that. That's cool. Um, what was cool. the last thing that you covered? Um, the last thing that we covered was death and dying and the ethics of abortion um, euthanasia and uh, suicide. Mm. Keep, keep in the light then. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we started with much lighter topics, but yeah, um, <laughs> it, it was a, a fairly heavy topic. Um, yeah. The yeah. topic before that was even heavier with um, the ethics of, of uh, dealing with your family and some of that. Oh, right. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of us have to deal with our families over the holiday. Right. And the ethics of telling yep. your, your parents to go pound sand and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that. So it was, it was, yeah, the last two topics have been mm -hmm. fairly heavy. Okay. Um, and, and I think the last topic for atheists in particular was, was probably heavier than. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, speaking of which, yeah, I can't uh, wait to get to something cheerful like the trolley problem. <laughs> <laughs> we, we discussed that earlier. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. So, so speaking of which, how was uh, how was y'all's holiday? Was it Pretty good. Yeah, okay. I got uh, I got a uh, a commission. Somebody gave me money and said, "Do whatever you want." And so I'm doing a painting on that. And so cool, <laughs> based nice. on that. So yeah. that's neat. I get to spend time with the family in Phoenix, and nobody died, and I wasn't disowned. So <laughs> well, <laughs> those are good things. We'll count that as a win. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mine was mine was uh, quite good until it wasn't. Oh. Uh, and it it just it snowballed right up there, until there that point. There was a certain point, huh? point where it couldn't be stopped. Yeah. You know? mm. That's too bad. Yeah. And and actually that kind of brings me into the first thing that I wanted to talk about. It was a is an, is an argument technique that kind of irked me a little bit. Yeah. And I want to get y'all's take on it. Sure. So talking politics in particular, uh, 
you get on a little bit of a rant, you know. Mm-hmm. Sure. You're talking about this and that, and the person disagrees with you, and they say, they, they interject, and they say, oh, well, where did you get that? Right. And they do it over and over and over again. Mm. I mean, yeah. how do you feel about it? Because that really irked me. I try, I very much try not to do that because right. it's so, for me, it's very disingenuous. Yeah, I, I think, I, um, I mean, from a certain point of view, straight epistemology kind of does the same thing as how do you know that? Um, well, I but, think there's a difference between how do you know or why do you believe that or how do you know that as opposed to if you're talking about politics, especially right. where did you get that? Because I feel it's like all, they're, they, right. it's, yeah. fake news is right around the corner. Yeah. Well, from my perspective, you're doing it for two reasons. You're either purposely doing it, which – um, you know, your proverbial, uh, you know, crappy uncle right. probably isn't doing that, is not a tactic that he's using to trip you up. Right. I think it's more unconscious. Uh, it is giving them permission internally to, if you can't give your source, if you can't think of your source immediately, they're like, okay, well, he doesn't even know where he's getting this. Right. Or if you throw out a source that they don't like. It gives them permission to disregard anything that you say further. Yeah, and right, and that, I think that's and, the real problem with that. Yeah, and at the very least, it breaks your flow. Exactly. Right. It, it it is meant to trip you up and give them permission to disregard anything that you say that they don't like. Uh, so when I've yeah. I've tried using street epistemology in politics, and they start doing the well, where did you get that? Yeah, it's generally so they can discount the source without actually looking at whether or not what it what they're saying is true, mm-hmm. and so. Um, with some of of the more diehard Fox fans, if it comes from CNN, MSNBC, or anybody else, regardless of what it is, it's automatically false. Right. Oh, sure, sure. Um, but then you get into, well, how do you know and what sources do you trust? You know, and how do you go back to those original sources? And we're human beings, and you're in the 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 flow, so. You don't have yeah. your your laptop or your you know you you have your phone. And you can go get look at it up on the phone, but if you don't have those things bookmarked or easily found, I think it is just a a tactic because they can always say yeah. if it's a conservative, they can always say, oh, "I got it from Fox." Well, okay, so how do you know the Fox is right? And now you're into that that how good is your source routine, which is is not right. necessarily what you want to do. Yeah, which is yeah. I mean that's kind of why I was purposely. Not trying to do that. Yeah. It's, again, it's just – it's kind of a crappy tactic if you are doing it consciously. Um, and I try to stay away from that as best I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, it, it, it's, yeah, I, th- I think it's just – it's impolite and, and – Yeah, it's not honest discourse. Right. You are not taking seriously what they're saying if you right. are trying purposely to trip them up, whether it's conscious or unconscious. Right. Uh, and there are better ways to ask the same question that aren't as aggressive or, uh, you know, instead of saying, you know, where did you get that or how did you come to that conclusion? That's a, a common SE question um, hmm. that gets you to, to step back and think and you can work through your reasoning, um, which is far more important in some ways than than sources. Um, but, yeah, it's just... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Wow. W- without solid epistemology... Whether y- your sources being good can be coincidental, right? So. Yeah, yeah. Huh. I, I have not read up on street epistemology. I've heard it bandied about a bunch, and, right? And I know it's an issue, but uh, I, I don't know the details. And yeah, that's that's a pretty crappy tactic. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's just kind of got under my skin a little bit. There was mm-hmm. a lot of things that got under my skin, but that one. Uh, yeah, that stood out. Yeah, and I, it's a. Uh, yeah, I would like to know what was making them ask that question over and over and over again, because um, I don't know the person involved. You do, and so um, yeah, I'm not going to go into any details. Yeah, but suffice to say, it, well, it sounds like then if somebody's trying a gish gallop on you, you should do exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> a, a gish gallop. Yes. Well, you don't know Gish Gallop? No. That's du- Dwayne Gish? Yeah, apparently famous for, uh, during debates, he would issue claim after claim after claim after claim after oh, okay. claim, which 
each one takes a second to to uh, to utter, but takes a half an hour to refute. Right, and right. it's like, yeah, yeah, that's the gish gallop. Oh, okay. yeah, it's, it's a formal debate. Horrible, it, it, horrible. It, you, you can be pretty well hosed in that case. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So if they're doing that, then you retaliate with the cite it, cite it, cite it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when you're hanging out, having just a regular conversation, not not online. It, if you're right. online, I would say absolutely cite your sources, ask for people's sources. Yeah. They have time to give you those links. Right. But if you're face-to-face -face with somebody, maybe you're a couple of drinks in. You know, yeah. It, it's, cut, cutting them off and saying, oh, well, where did you get that? 99% of the time... They don't even mean it. They don't care. Right. They're looking for an excuse to disregard what you're about, what you just said. Right. right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and it's kind of like to know what the motivation was be behind it. Because um, I know, I, you know, listening to some theists um, and talking to them, uh, I see them starting to apply SE. And I don't know if they're doing it consciously or if they've encountered enough street epistemology folks that they've picked up yeah. um, the the questioning habits. So well, I mean, as long as they're doing it honestly and they're trying to engage in honest discourse, yes. that's fine. Yeah, and I think that's the I think that is the the Achilles heel of of many of us, um, whether we're doing straight epistemology or not. But thinking, you know, most of the atheists that I know are trying to do so from an honest and locator point. Yeah, and. When someone isn't coming from that point of view, it is really, really hard to talk to them, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a skill. Yeah. Resistant. It's a skill yeah. that you develop and in, in being able to pick up on uh, dishonest discussion tactics mm -hmm. is something that you have to learn. Mm -hmm. And so most people, they don't pick up on stuff like that. Right. And I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I'm an idiot. But <laughs> 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 I at least care enough about this to... Be yeah. able to pick up on stuff like that. Yeah. Better than a lot of people, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, once you get comfortable with I don't know, I think that is the... Helps yeah. a lot. Yeah. It's it's hard to be honest if you're not willing to say I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know? I do. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So, I mean, with that out of the way, uh, do we want to move into emails? Dennis. Well, let's see. I've got an email right here. You, you do? If you don't want to try and find something. All right, let's see what we got. And this is from Michael. Hey, Michael. A.K.A. the evil eye. Cool. Uh, when they say God was the reason they accomplished or got through something, ask them, if I could prove right now that God doesn't exist, to what would you attribute the same outcomes you've already had. Hmm. Uh, I, I, I responded to this email, uh -huh. oh. and I said, I think actually what you want to say is, you know, what if God told you he didn't do the things for you that you're saying he did? He did? Right. Oh, that's good. Then, well, yeah, what, you know, to what would you attribute those, those positive outcomes? And... Uh, yeah, that's that's an interesting thing. Right. An interesting, interesting question. Mm. Yeah, what do you attribute it to if you um, are going through something traumatic and you say, you know, there but for the grace of God go I, or you know, right. God saved me. Um, you saved yourself, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or the the caller we had uh, on Atheist Experience last week was talking about how she'd been shot six times and survived. Oh, wow. Jeez. And I missed like, that okay. one. Yeah. Um, and she was, you know, she considers herself a miracle. And yet people get shot five, six, seven, eight, ten times. Mm -hmm. um, not on a regular basis and survive <laughs> often enough that it, it isn't that unusual. I mean, one of the reasons, so the story goes, as I understand it, the Marines are called Leathernecks is because yeah. some of the folks that are fighting in the Philippines uh, would get shot 10, 15, 20 times with a thirty-eight, and still get into knife-cutting range. Right. And so the way to protect their necks was with a leather collar. Um, it's also why the military went from a thirty-eight to a forty-five, or so the story goes. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. um, 
but you know that's uh, drugs and other things they're putting into their system to help them um, get to that level. But uh, was it God or or was it just you got shot in the right places that it wasn't mo- immediately fatal? instantly mortal? Yeah, right. Yeah, you got adrenaline rush and you're already tough as nails. So. Right. I mean, yeah. And of course, I mean, you know, you, you, then you go to the cat. God help me find my car keys. Right. Uh, well, no, I didn't. So <laughs> <Yeah>. now what? <laughs> yeah, where are you? Oh, I guess I just found them. Yeah, that's, right. that's not as impressive, is it, as no. a miracle? <laughs> no, it really is. No, it, I, I find it pretty self aggrandizing. Yes. Yeah. Just, oh, yeah. No. The almighty creator of the universe helped me specifically with this one thing because right. I'm so special. You know, right. Creator of the universe helped me find my car key. He's my bestest friend. Right. And I think the, the caveat to that is what about um, kids who are starving, who are Christian yeah. and praying for food yeah. and he yeah. doesn't? Uh, don't think about it. Yeah. I mean, ha- what, what does that say about your God? That it, it, right. It, so both those questions. Are yes, I didn't help you find your car keys. I'd also let these kids starve. Right. Yeah. Now tell me why you worship this thing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, yeah. Why, you know, why do bad things happen to good people if God exists? Mm-hmm. Fundamental question. Yeah. But yeah, I found that yeah. an interesting question. Usually yeah. the answer to that is free will, which I find oh. an insufficient <laughs> answer. If you want this to be a philosophy <laughs> heavy thing, I'm all for free will. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hearkening back to an early episode of the nonprofits that was uh, turned over entirely to the free will argument, and it was me against the other two hosts. So it's really fun. So, so which, which side did you come down on? We have none. <laughs> There's no such thing as free will. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think we have enough to be conclusive. Yeah. Um, we do know that on occasion the sum of the parts can be greater than the whole, but yeah, my, in this my, case. Yeah, my position has changed. You know, I was like this hard determinist. All right. Stuff. Now I'm going, oh, no, determinism, determinism is utterly dead because we have, you know, at the root of the universe, we have the quantum realm, which is utterly random. Right. So... Well, so now again, defend, depending on your definition, yeah, of utterly random. yeah. But <laughs> so. now, now I'm 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 going. My the way I phrase it is: we're robots marching into an uncertain future. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah pretty <laughs> much. Uh, butterfly effect and, and yeah. all the rest. We're not puppets; we're robots, and there's a crucial difference. There. Yeah. Uh. I, my memory is that um, the 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 synaptic, synaptic responses in our brain, like it. It happens before we have time to register. In many cases, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so... Yeah, there, yeah, there's some folks doing research on the origin of thoughts within the brain and how they get started. Yeah, I was listening to... Uh, uh, <sighs> Sam Harris? Sam Harris, thank yeah, you, because we were talking about neurological He's one of the ones stuff. doing it, yeah. yeah that's right. He, and he mentions it he, in he says, you know, Landscape, you know, I think. You know, you can't decide the next thought that's going to enter your head. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And if you can't control that and your actions are based on your thoughts, right. <laughs> who's in control? Come on. Right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. And if it's all neural net, then how do you train your neural net to? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, we have another email. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, yes, yes, I can look for them. We, we have an email from Chuck from Arizona, if oh. I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Wow. We have several. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, this one is indeed from Chuck in Arizona. Why, it's wondered, does the omniscient God seem, so, seem to sometimes be less than all-knowing? It's because having all perfections, he must be maximally open-minded. This means that although he knows everything, he doesn't actually believe any of it. Weak-minded lesser beings can doubt a few things at a time, but God must doubt everything all the time and can't accept any of his perfect knowledge is undoubtedly true. Uh, No, I'd have to to say no. (laughs) Interesting, interesting. Interesting attack surface yeah. on that one, but... Mm. <laughs> so, right, I guess it depends on your definition of knowledge, which yeah. 
if your definition of knowledge includes the word true, um, right, then it would by definition exist at some level. It may not exist like a book exists. It may exist like numbers. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of throws that whole thing away. So I would like to know what do you mean by knowledge? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, if it includes the word true. define your terms in something like this, definitely. Yeah. An all -no -it. Maximally open-minded. I yeah. have no idea how that works. <laughs> Having well, all perfections. Well, what, what does open-minded have to do with knowing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right. I think you're right there. I mean, we're, we're open-minded because we don't know a whole heck of a lot. So it, we would have to be open-minded. God who knows everything that is true. If we, you know, justified true belief. Well, I think I think he's using open-minded, in the sense that you 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 are admitting that you could possibly be wrong. If you know everything because you're uh, a maximal being, then you would have to be by definition closed-minded, because you know everything. You know everything. You know everything. Absolutely. You have certainty. justified you have true belief. You have to be closed-minded. Yeah. yeah. Can't be open-minded because right. there will be something well, you don't know which is, which is impossible. I, I'll, I'll, I'll disagree with you on one thing. I don't yeah. think that if you're omniscient, open-minded and closed-minded apply to you. Fair. They, it they, may they, be. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so it's not quite a disagreement. It's just open-minded and closed-minded, I think, only apply when you have an imperfect set of knowledge. Yeah, they don't make sense. Well, right. it's even for, worse when you're like, like this timeless eternal yeah. being then there is there is no point where you didn't know everything you would ever do right and that means you never had to decide any of those things which means you're just following a list of instructions at that point <laughs> right and also uh, all knowing in terms of what does yeah. knowledge can things change so the position of this book just changed yeah, when they're talking the God, I have to assume he means the position and velocity of every subatomic particle for its entire duration of the universe. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and the, but does that give him any predictive power? How does time work? Uh, wow, well, I've got a he, question. He would know every. He would necessarily know everything that would happen in this universe. But at what, at what point in time? I've got a question about time. all uh, points we're in time. Finish this. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel like you run into some of these problems when you try to define God into existence yes. by creating all these, uh, you know, characteristics. Mm -hmm. He's omni mm -hmm. this, he's omni that. Yes, and you and haven't you established his existence. Yeah, 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 you don't really flesh that out completely. Um, you, ooh, it gets messy. Yeah. yeah, especially when you use the word omni. Which yeah. is right. all, right? And that's where you start getting all powerful. Okay, can he make a rock so big he can't lift it? That's a, a logical contradiction and, and yes, it's a you know, grade school yeah. thing, but it's it's also very true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are there are logical problems. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. the thing is in the Bible does it even it I know it doesn't it probably doesn't use the words omnis omnipotent or anything, but does I it? I don't think so. I, does it actually sure it ever, say that we that that he's got all these qualities? Um, I think it says something to the effect of that. Yeah, um, it's all just poetic. I mean, uh, I'm the alpha, <laughs> the omega. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess. That could be the baseline for the, you know, the omni-god. Right, right. Right. But that just means he's at the beginning and the end. That doesn't, I mean, is beginning of what and the end of what and what is he doing in the meantime? Because right. there's got to be a middle if there's a beginning and an end. Sure. And it opens up the question, you know, where do they get this idea that we have free will? And where do, do the do the Christians get the? Does it say in the Bible we have free will? I have no idea. I don't yeah, remember off it's kind of yeah. Um, I don't know if it, it 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 suggests it in some interpretation of a right phrase in the Bible somewhere. I, I guess that yeah. has to be well, it. That, that gets again into epistemology because, yeah. you know, we have all these Christians who think abortion is bad. And yet, if you go back to the Bible, the only thing oh, the Bible yeah. says is that life begins when you're born. Right. Um, and, and, and when you draw your first breath, I think. Yeah, there, draw your first breath. There's a passage specifically about And doesn't that. it yeah. give instructions on how to do an abortion? Yeah. Um, it it gives instructions to determine whether or not the child is yours. Ah, as okay. A man. Okay. And if the child isn't, it commits abortion. Yeah, it's an abortion. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's an abortion potion that only kicks in yes. if your wife has been unfaithful. Right, right. right. 
Yeah. So and it only works. It, it only works if God makes it work because you have to do. Um, it's not just a potion. It's a magic. It, yeah, magic, magic spell. spell. It's a whole yeah. spell it's with, a ritual, with yeah. potion. Yeah. And the whole Bible is rife with stuff that goes contrary to "Thou shalt not kill." So well, it's like <laughs> right. And what's interesting, I heard a rabbi once talk about "Thou shalt not kill," and he says that it's actually "Thou shalt not commit murder." Murder, right? Oh. And that is different than killing because killing would include war, but war is not murder. Right, and animals. Right, and unfortunately, God loves the smell of burning animals. <laughs> well, which one? Oh. Which, which, oh, which version of God? Ones. <laughs> yeah. Which version of God? The Old Testament uh, God? Or the yeah, the Old Testament. God. God. Also, he drown, just loves that stuff. Drown animals too. Yeah, yeah. 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 God. <laughs> well, you know, boiled boiled chicken is, is good in certain circumstances. I don't like boiled chicken. Oh well, no. Okay. No. Get a pan fry at first. Get get a little bit of a crust. You know, yeah. Uh, develop okay. some flavor. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's as long as it I tastes mean, good, I don't care how yeah, you yeah. what the prep is. But you know, <laughs> as with many things, I'm a Venn diagramist as opposed to. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my hot take on boiled chicken. Yeah. So, okay. Well, do we have a story? Uh, well, actually, you reminded me of the 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 question that I had. Ah, ah. yes. Ask I, I told question. you earlier. It, it's kind I'm of not a little bit of a like a maybe. Stoner type questions, no, okay. maybe not necessarily sure. philosophical, but it popped into my head out of nowhere the other day. It is about freezing time. Oh, okay. And, and does cool. that and does that necessarily make sense? So, it, in a lot of like movies and TV and all that, you see people freeze time, and then they do all kinds of stuff. You know, they go. They're not rob- frozen, but the the people around them are frozen. And yeah, yeah, they go rob a bank and all this. Sure. And so they've got a big hoard of cash, and then they unfreeze time, and they've still got all that money. Right. Does that necessarily make sense? Because if you are outside of time and space when you freeze time, well, would anything that you do during that non-time actually happen? Because it didn't actually happen because it's outside of time and space, necessarily. Well, mm-hmm. just because you freeze time, I don't necessarily agree that you are, by definition, outside of space. Okay, out, okay uh, yeah. So you're outside of time. So did that thing that you did happen? Oh, uh, you... yes, but it happened in zero amount of time for everybody but you because remember time is right. relative. Sure. So so you don't think that all the all the money that you hoarded would just snap back? Oh no. No. No, no. no. Cuz that's physical. And also yeah. it d- depends on the the physics you're using to to right. freeze time. Yeah. Right? Or to create the effect of freezing yeah. time. If mm-hmm. you move fast enough for instance, everyone else is moving very very slow and you're moving fast and it would appear to be frozen in time. Right. Um yeah. And the other one you have a device that affects the rest of the universe yeah. except you. Right. And slows everything down. Yeah. Right. Which which yeah. really brings the question is if so that would require Way too much power. You would think. <laughs> right. But if you were to freeze like just the bank. Right. Yeah. And you have just yeah. like a bubble. That would be weird. Mm. Yeah, it would be weird, but it also brings up the question of how do the people who are out of step with time get jumped into the into sync with the rest of the, the universe? You mean if yeah. you step into it? Well, yeah, if you step into it or when you yeah. turn the, the, the machine off, right? Because... Everyone else in the rest of the world outside the bank has moved forward, let's say, five minutes. Right. They're still stuck five minutes ago. Yeah. So what happens when you turn the machine off? Well, they're, they're, the, the people in the bank are going to be five minutes younger than everyone else. Right. But what happens to time itself? Because if time is a, a fourth dimension, so to speak, yeah. okay. of the universe, right, if you have two physical uh, objects that talking, are moving along at the same yeah, time. Yeah, you're talking about the nature of time itself. Yeah. I have no <laughs> idea what... <laughs> right? It's kind of like, what? Well, yeah. no, there's yeah. uneven parallel lines. And if you way. freeze, if you actually freeze time instead of making it go very slowly, then you can't move because nothing can get out of your way. Right. <laughs> Even the air molecules won't be able to get out of your way at all. And right. So it's yeah. bad. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> or, or would that fracture reality and create a different universe where there's a, there's a new timeline? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and again, I, we would need to get 
someone far wow, more you're than temporal mechanics. <laughs> time freezing is being more destructive than I <laughs> imagined. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, there, there, there's got to be some sort of energy release between the, the two times. And yeah. so, yeah, there's there's got to be. Uh, I, I just find it amusing that, you know, if you want to beat up a bunch of beat up a bunch of people, you, know, yeah. you freeze time, and you walk up onto them, you put a hand in their chest, and then you lean on them, and then you you walk away and start time back up. And all the the pressure... Ooh, potential, that, right. the potential that, energy. Yeah, all that pressure that you put on them for a minute suddenly happens in you know a split second, and they go flying backwards, and it's all super, super strength and stuff. Yeah, like. yeah, that, that gets into... Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's not really a stoner question. This is something that happens if you are a, a comic uh book geek, um I think yeah. role playing geek. I think I was uh, watching Rick and Morty actually. Yeah. yeah. There was a great one. It wasn't the, it wasn't there an X Men uh X Men have played with episode time. Yeah. where some guy's running so fast around this room and he's tipping hats and yeah. Taking the bullets out of guns. Flash and has all done that before, yeah. 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 Uh, While people are standing there frozen. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's a, it's a common trope in sci-fi and yeah. and uh, superhero I, genre. I presented a, uh, a, pro, a question. It delves into uh, politics, but it could also be used, you know... I, just, I, I declared I'm a villain because only villains use mind control to permanently change people. Right. And if I had the ability to mind control people and permanently change them, I would absolutely use it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, I would take uh, buy a ticket to Washington, D.C. <laughs> there you go. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah I'm a gets, villain. Yeah, and clearly that is not ethical. Don't give me that power, yeah. please, because I will totally use it. <laughs> well, that's very Robin Hood-esque, though, I think. <laughs> Well, yeah, but still, it's when you when you change somebody permanently like that, you're killing the person they used to be. Right, and well, it's like <laughs> so with politicians, uh, with the exception of some, um, you can make the case that, that that's probably not a good thing. But let's go to something where we've got a little more clearer ethics on that, and say murderers and rapists, right? And, you know, uh, hardened criminals. If you could go and change them or pedophiles, yeah. And and what do you do when somebody's nasty and you find out it's due to a tumor mm -hmm. and you remove it, you've changed them. Right. Yeah. You, well, you've so made them healthy, but still you've changed well, that, them. That's actually, so that's weird, actually so. happened. Where, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they, they became a, a criminal because of the tumor. Yes. And so taking the tumor out uh, fixed them. Uh, return them to normal, so to speak. Right. But, yeah, that's also a, a common science fiction trope is, you know, how do we deal with criminals? Can we actually, you know, death of personality as opposed to death of the person? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, and, you know, Doc Savage, he, he solved criminals by sitting there cutting into their brains and fixing them. So yeah. It was like, wow. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we used to lobo lobotomize people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Before, yeah, and that, that comes up. The question kind of is how do theists deal with these questions? Yeah. Right? Um, because as atheists, we can deal with them by looking at the ethics and and first deciding on, on what type right. of ethics we're looking at and, and how we're going to make those judgments. And we can go, well, that way of doing it's not going to work because of this. And, and we yeah. look at these things. And we, we can yeah. change our mind based Strangely, on the actual evidence. I right. don't imagine Christians have any problem with mind control because God does it in the Bible. Yeah, but uh, so the, the question is, is, is... I guess it's people aren't allowed to, but God can. Right. He's, well, he's special. But, yeah. he's but special. also you get two preachers and preacher A prays and says, yes, we can mind control people under these circumstances. Preacher B says, no, we can't. How do you resolve that? Yeah. So if how it's do you resolve prayer, that? Right? Yeah. Yeah. They both prayed. Well, it, okay. So how do we resolve those issues? And, you know, he, he, whenever I, yeah. I've asked... Uh, I'll harden Pharaoh's heart. Well, you're doing mind control. So. Yeah, ex exactly. Yeah. 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 You thought it out. You're, you're taking, taking choice away. Assuming free will existed, you're taking it away. So, yeah, yeah I mean, right. yeah. God is obviously the bad guy in that story. Yeah, and I think taking agency away is, is uh, 
I, I hate words like all because they're they're way too powerful. Um, uh-huh. But I think in almost all, nearly all cases, taking away someone's agency is is a bad idea. Um, we have to be very careful with that, and and God does not appear right. to be that careful with it. I mean, he no. hardens Pharaoh's heart so he can kill a whole bunch of people. He's got to know what's right. going to happen next. And he 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 predicted what. Uh, uh, God, who was it who denied Jesus three times? Peter. Yeah, told him he was going to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. And despite Peter's clear free will protest that, no, I will not do that, he ends up doing it anyway. So it's right. like all the stories in the Bible that deal with prophecy and the Christians like to go, well, a prophecy you know, comes true. That means free will doesn't. Right, right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And, and that's problematic in and of itself. Yeah. Why are we taking... And if, if you were to say, to, to go back to the story of Pharaoh, well, here's an example of when it's okay to take away someone's free will yeah. or agency, of all the ways to convince the Pharaoh to let the Israelites go, that a all-powerful or maximally powerful God would have... Yeah. That seems to me to be the most egregious way to do it. It's a weird counterintuitive way. Yeah. yeah. Let my people go. God goes, no. <laughs> we'll delay this a little further. Right. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, I need to show off and torture some people. Yeah. 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 Let's see if we can get the firstborn out of here. Yeah. Yeah. And there's Jeez. another story related to that, that where God goes and talks to a magician and says, hey, you served me for a long time. Um, don't help the Israelites. And then help them. And then he, it's this whole thing, and it's like, wait a minute. What are you doing? Why is this here? There's no sense. And this is where you get into right. the talking ass, right, or the talking mule. Because um, the mule says, hey, there's an angel there. I can't go any farther. And it, yeah. <laughs> Freaking Mr. Ed, what the hell? Yeah. It's- <laughs> so, again, just, just when you go to the Bible and you're looking for how do we go to the Bible and say, how if because we're getting to a point where I think we can yeah. Uh, on the cusp of being able to to do things like you know change people's minds and the way they're wired, and then do we have the ethics, no, ethical right, abilities right. to do that? If you go back to the Bible, there's no clear answer as to yeah. when, and the clear answers that we do have are horrifyingly <laughs> unethical. Right? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's kind of hard for an archaic moral system to keep up with the changing technology. Right. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. They, oh, yeah. yeah. They, yeah. There's nothing in the Bible to account for cloning or any. There's so much that it just doesn't apply to. Yeah. Cloning, especially. I mean, yeah. there's there's some interesting ethical. Yeah. Um, because just because clone A agrees, say, hey, yes, I want to be cloned, does not necessarily mean that clone B has agreed to that. And is yeah. capable of making that decision, unlike a. a well, uh, you know. What would okay? Never mind. I I, I, w- I would think well when you create a clone, you're creating another human being, an individual. Right. To me, that's no problem. They're an individual. Mm-hmm. They're they're, mm-hmm. they're a human with all the rights and everything. Right. Which is why I say they're capable of making the decision whether or not they want to exist. Just because clone A did doesn't necessarily mean that clone B agrees. Well, but it, yeah. it, well, children don't have the right to decide that. But they don't have the ability either. Right. And the clone doesn't before you make it. Yeah, that's kind of where it. it yeah, yeah, before you make weird. it, or, yeah, it, it it gets real weird. So, yeah. but the clone. Now, are we talking the science fiction clone where it becomes a duplicative you right down to the knowledge in the brain, or just a a basically you have to raise the clone as a baby? That's what the clone yeah. will be. It will be a baby, and you mm-hmm. raise it to adulthood just like a child. So it's it. it I I can't see a difference between a clone and a child. Yeah, and I I think it's the capability initially, right? A child takes a long time to develop to a point where they can think. Yeah. Um, So the same with the clone. Well, it depends, again, depends on which version of the clone we're talking about. Science fiction, if it's vet grown in two months, you know, or something, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Then you got a problem. You got an adult with a blank brain. And and if you've duplicated the nut. I think in that case, um, you know, a lot of religious objections would be. The, the splitting of the soul, right. say. And that would be a, a huge uh, factor in why they would consider it immoral yeah. because you can, no, you can't split the soul up. Now, is there a religious reason why you wouldn't want to fix genetic defects 
before God the, doesn't make mistakes. There are no <laughs> that? genetic yeah, defects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that as a weird. I saw that as a meme this morning. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, well, it, it's like it's like okay, random people get together and have children, mm -hmm. and it's all a big roll of the dice. Right. But as soon as it's, we have the power to go. Oh, we can determine. Uh, qualities of this mm -hmm. new child, right. baby. We can deliberately determine it. All of a sudden, everything's weird and uh, random is better. I guess uh, I don't know. It's weird. Some some. Why really... would random be better than deliberate? Um, yeah. that that's touchy. Well, yeah. Uh, a random walk will get you solutions that a a more deterministic method of. You know, there are, are, ran, are ways to include randomness in solving problems. Yes, yes. So I don't know. Yeah, it's right? bizarre. <laughs> it's bizarre. It, you know, evolution has been trial and error up till now, right? Right. You know, it's all yeah. trial and error. And mostly error. And mostly <laughs> error for the mountains of fossils. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and also error because, you know, it, nature may, may have made the right choice for that particular... Uh, aspect of the way the planet was at the time, uh -huh. but then, you know, a hundred years later, it's changed. Changes out from all under of a sudden, it. yeah. it's the wrong choice. <laughs> sure, I think an objection would be like, who necessarily is guiding the the, the standards for? Let's say we get into genetic engineering. Yeah, right? yeah, that, that's who, kind of what I'm talking yeah, about. Who's, yeah, who's the gatekeeper for? Right, what you know, what is considered a defect and what isn't? Yeah. Right now, it's random. Yeah. Right, and there's there's that's, no one making a decision. That's, that, right, that's where you get in really dangerous territory. It is, it is. Yeah, um, and, I, and and part of that too is who can afford it, right? Because you are in. If, yeah. If only the rich can afford it, you're really in the danger of creating right. two versions of the subspecies. Yeah, then you're in Gattaca territory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you, you can make the case, like in medieval and uh, times and earlier, that because rich people had better access to food and better food, that there may have been that kind of divide. Yeah. Um, that was real in terms of, of quality of thinking and the person between a rich noble and, and a peasant. I mean, you could make that argument. I don't know if it's a good one or not. Right. But now you have the ability to actually go in and manipulate genes and make people smarter. Yeah. And you can only allow that for the rich. That's yeah. the first ethical question right. to my mind that we've got yeah. to solve is it needs to be available to everybody who wants it. Right. Not just to the rich. And this yeah. is the same thing with like medical care right now. Right. And right. Yeah. If we're, we're working towards longevity. And right. Yeah. If only the rich can live forever, then we got yeah. two classes of people out there. Right. Yeah. And there's some really good science fiction along those oh, lines. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, Altered carbon being Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Dystopia, not utopia. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, utopias when everybody And of course, it, 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 it filters into eugenics and mm -hmm. stuff, you know, and we practice eugenics on animals right. all the time. You know, we've got, you know, the, all the different dog breeds testify to the fact that, yeah, we can generate just about anything. Yeah. Yeah. Given the right, given the right beginning material, and it's like, wow. Yeah. It, you know, doing it to dogs is okay, but doing it to people is not well, I mean, so arguably, it's like, why <laughs> you, can de you can definitely argue against that though, because there are multiple dog breeds and other animal breeds that we have basically created. Oh yeah, that they live in constant pain because we yes. wanted them to look a certain way. Right. Yeah. You know, we were really stupid in our selection process, and yeah, the, the, what we wanted the end result to be like was yeah. Right. There, there's a breed yeah. of cat that has like droopy ears. It's really you know, it's really cute, but it it lives in pain. You know, that's, oh, wow. that's not okay. No, yeah. that's not okay. Yeah. And then we get into questions of agency with, you know, breeding humans and... Yeah, yeah. It's... Uh, Well-being, yeah. All those <sighs> questions are not good. So to make it a little bit less depressing, let's go... <laughs> <laughs> Let, yeah. Let's go with... Um, I can't even remember how we got onto this. Well, actually, no, I do. It's, but, this has been <laughs> wide ranging so far. <laughs> Let's say it's the it's the um, super futuristic type of cloning where it is an exact copy of you at the same age of you uh, that, that you're at when the procedure happens. 
they've got the same memories. Same so memories. What are your now thoughts? you're getting what, what are your thoughts on ugly. that, that well, so type of cloning? At, at the moment the clone comes into existence, it has already started to diverge from the original because they right. cannot have the exact same, same experience. Right. For, they've got the same memories, but they're going to they have, have different the same experiences memories, after, but different after, experiences the, after right. the cloning. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the person making the decision, clone A, we'll call them, the, the yeah. original, does not have the experience of knowing their copy. Right. So the copy, does the copy know their copy? If it does, then it's not the exact same experience. Therefore, it's also not the exact same person who made the decision. Right. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because clone yeah. B. And yeah. plus, you know, what do their, who gets the property? Right. Yeah, there, there are legal ramifications and right. Then, then ramifications. how do you tell the clone from the original for those legal ramifications, right? right? Yeah. Um, yeah, which is why I say there's a slight difference between a newborn uh, having agency and, and the clone having agencies because there's a lot of questions yeah. about a full-grown adult clone, this yeah. is the assumption I'm making, in terms of how you actually get it built. It gets and, even mm -hmm. murkier if you're talking about a child clone. Right. Yeah. And it also gets murkier as to why are you creating this clone? Let's assume for a moment right. that the number one reason people create clones is so they can freeze them for spare parts. Right. You're freezing a autonomous yeah. being for the sole purpose of removing parts and putting them into you. They'll say, oh, but we, we grow the clone without a brain, right? But then you're going... That's kind of even worse. <laughs> well, uh, well, I would I need. Don't to, know. I, I think that would require many, many months of discussion and a whole lot of wine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's if it doesn't have a brain, it's not thinking agent. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, I think it falls into. I think I'd be okay with that. Yeah, because you're just growing, I know, I know. You're it's, just it's, growing a meat carcass. It's twitchy. Yeah, right. Yeah. As long as you're growing a meat carcass and that's what you're doing, that's okay. So the, I think the question is, is, how do you get to the point where it's a clone that doesn't have a brain? How do you, how do you get there? If you're removing yeah. the brain at creation, then I have a problem. No, I think you're probably adjusting the probably adjusting the genes. Yeah, so that yeah. never has one. Right, in which case is no longer is it exact genetic match, right. or how? It's is that? right. You're right. It's not. It's, per, it's not a clone per se. Right. Uh, oh boy. Yeah. Well, I mean, so yeah. cells replicate, and there there are mutations constantly. So. Right. Boy, the trolley problem is easy compared <laughs> to this shit. <laughs> well, you know, thought, thought experiments exist because they're the the way we. The philosophers, you know, take test tubes out yeah. and try to isolate for a single thing, for a, yeah. sing, a, a single ethical question. And right. that's what the trolley oh, yeah. is. Single I love, I love thought experiments. Right. My favorite is is uh, having to do with free will. Right. You know, God comes down and decides to whisper in your ear a running commentary of everything you're going to do. You're going to sit in that chair. You're going to eat that pizza. You're going to do this. You're right. going to do that. And nothing you can do can alter because he's issuing prophecy as right. he talks. Right. So, and if the prophecy has to come true, then you have to do, end up doing what he says oh, you'll that do. sounds like a living and hell. And in just a split, you know, and I think in just a minute, any Christian would say, oh, we don't have free will at all. Yeah. We're all puppets. Right. That sounds horrific. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And God, and according, you know, the God could do that, uh, you know, according to the story and the stories in the Bible. Yeah. He could, yeah. if he chose to do it, do it. And if he stops doing it, well, he's just stopped showing you the strings. But the, you know, right, the puppetry right. is still there. Mm. Yeah. So it's like, yikes. So I, I, I like to say that with, you know, if there is a God in the universe, you know, mm -hmm. then free will is impossible. Right. But if there isn't a God then maybe it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's kind of tangential, I think, to the question that was raised in, in uh, Watchmen with Dr. Manhattan. Yeah. And he experiences all of his e existence at the same time. Right. So he knows what's going to happen no matter what all at the same time mm -hmm. where he is. 
is that actually locking in the future of everybody else around him? Right. And then how far does that lock-in function go? Right. Well, some things I've, I've said, you know, if the universe is utterly deterministic, there, there needs to be different levels of determinism. Right. Because at the top level, if the universe is utterly deterministic, then you could, if you could reach in from outside and remove a person, then for the rest of that person's life he was supposed to live, right, people would be talking to thin air. Right. You know, now the universe is out of sync, but nobody knows it because their brain will see the person still there. <laughs> but but he won't be. You know, there'll be a there'll be a a, a person shaped vacuum. <laughs> right. <laughs> Something like yeah, that. Yes. So how does it'll be uh, really weird? Yeah. Because yeah. hmm. the universe <laughs> has to proceed in a deterministic fashion, regardless that something's been removed. Yeah. But so there has to be different levels of determinism. Yeah, I, th I think to your point, um, knowing the future, I, I guess you could maybe bring that to, back to well, what is what's your definition of knowledge? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To what yeah. extent does he his knowledge of the future? Well, it only exists to what he perceives. Yeah. So anything yeah. that happens outside of oh, of his senses, yeah. he doesn't know what what's going on. But. In order for him to meet somebody in a cafe by accident, you think about all the causal things that happened to get that person in at that moment yeah. right. that he did, which means that if he did that on Monday, he meets this person. but And he's experiencing it on the Friday before the Monday, or let's call it Sunday just to make it easier, mm -hmm. right? It, and he's experiencing the same thing on Sunday. That means that events happened on Sunday that started to cause that Monday random meeting to occur. Yeah. Right? And he he may be privy to all that. I don't know. I don't know. It's not so much privy, but, but think about the causality from that. Yeah. Right? Because he's experiencing it before it happens. Right. Therefore, it has to have happened. Therefore, all the events... Have to happen as well. Right. And so it. how locked into his future right. is he really... And then how locked into his future is the rest of the world right. and the universe because, you know, we don't act in a vacuum. There's always a butterfly effect to what, yeah. you know, what happens. And when, when, when I was describing what omniscience was, that goes against all the laws of physics because you can't know the position and velocity of a subatomic particle. But with magic... Who knows? Well, with, with the math that we have now, we cannot, and it does not yeah. appear that we can with the math that we yeah, have. Yeah, it's not that there's there, that, that we don't have the technology to know both the position and the velocity. It's that it's logically impossible to know both the right, position right, and the right, velocity, right, which right. is really weird to wrap your brain around. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much quantum yeah. mechanics, which I think a, a quantum physicist, I forget which one said it, said it best. Not even quantum physicists understand quantum mechanics. Right. <laughs> so... That reminds me of um, a lot of the uh, ap apologetics about prophecy uh -huh. and the like statistical impossibility of this or that prophecy from the Bible happening. Right. It's so disingenuous because if you really break it down, you can you can say that just about anything has a statistical improbability. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. Uh, it just. Yeah. It, it's always been such a flat <laughs> argument for me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the, the, when you get into the prophecies, they're not specific enough. No. They're not. They can apply to multiple different things throughout history, depending on how loosely or strictly you want to interpret right. various pieces of them. And, yeah, um, without being specific, I don't know that any prophecy could be considered, or every, every prophecy can be considered true or every prophecy can be considered false, depending on how you want to define the prophecies. Mm. So, yeah, it's problematic. Yeah. But speaking of, of prophecies and weird yeah. stuff, um, we've got some news to talk about too, don't we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good segue. Damn, you're Professy. a professional. Yes. <laughs> Good segue. We should have had you on a long time ago. <laughs> um, yeah. You want to take? Oh, sure. I can do this. You, you've got the good voice for it. I've got the voice. Yeah. Mormon lawsuit could change how new houses of worship report abuse. January 9, 2020. Three years ago, Mormon officials in Oregon heard one of their members admit that he had abused one of his daughters. 
They heard his confession, then called law enforcement. Now they're being sued. Christine Johnson of Oregon claims the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints violated the doctrine of confidentiality when it disclosed her husband's confession leading to his arrest and imprisonment. Depending on the outcome, this lawsuit could have serious implications for the way houses of faith report abuse. Yeah. So uh, let's just start with kudos to the uh, LDS folks who reported this. This is finally a story where the church did the right thing. Yeah. Yes. Um, But (laughs) And got sued for it, but still. (laughs) Uh, How messed up is that? You can do the right thing and end up getting sued for it. Um, And then if I remember that article correctly, uh, one of the reasons what they're suing for is lost wages and how hard it's been on the family. Right. It says here, the lawsuit, which was filed uh, Friday, January 3rd, in Marion County Circuit Court in Oregon, seeks $9.5 million for the family's emotional distress and loss of income and 40000 to pay for criminal defense. Included in the lawsuit are four of the couple's five children. Well, really, so, the guy who abused should be the one... Paying all that. Paying all that, because... But it sounds like she's still married to him, and I'm making assumptions yeah. based on the fact they're Mormon. Yeah. Um, and the the kids are still in contact with a child abuser. I would like to know more of the details of the the, yes. the, the child abuse because that covers a wide range of topics, right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I I believe it was According, sexual abuse of yeah. a minor. According okay. to the suit, yeah. Johnson. <clears throat> learned in 2016 that her husband, Timothy, engaged in inappropriate conduct with his daughter when she was underage. After that, the suit says the couple followed the rules and scriptures of the Latter-day Saints, which require congregants to confess their sins unto the brethren before the Lord. Whatever that means. Yeah, what I I don't know what that means necessarily. Right. Improper conduct, that... uh, so he confessed it. Again, the devil's in the details. Let's assume the worst because I think that... Improper sexual contact is what it's called. Yeah. Um, well, that could be simply she walked in on him while he was naked and taking right. a shower, depending on Yeah, we on don't know well, the details. Well, I mean, contact is pretty specific. He had yeah. touched her inappropriately. Right. I, I, I'm thinking that's probably exactly what it was. We, yeah. That we could be safe assuming the worst case scenario. Um, I, and I which, mean, disgusting details aside... He touched his daughter inappropriately. They told that he confessed to church officials. Yeah, he and they, knew it was they, wrong. And they actually did the right thing for once. Right. Uh, so kudos to the this specific LDS church. Yeah. At the yeah. very at the very least. Yeah, and those but, leaders who, yeah. who did it. They seem to care about the victim. Right. Yeah. Yay. Where is the caring about the victim from mom? And That's, the other victims. Yeah. Because if Your he did it to daughter. one... Yeah. And pedophiles... What are the odds? Yeah, what are the odds he's... And they want to stay together. Um, And what does it say about that society that she apparently can't work or doesn't want to work to support herself and isn't capable... And apparently, from the lawsuit, is not capable of of supporting herself. Well, she has, like, uh, five children. I mean, that's pretty standard. Yeah, for, yeah. For uh, an LDS or a Catholic. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, it's undoubtedly she's in hardship. Right. Right. But that is due to bad decisions made by her husband, not the well, church. Well, the number of kids would be both her and her husband. Well, yeah. it's LDS, so probably her husband. But, um, yeah, I, the whole story just reeks of, of just what, what were they thinking? What are the ethics involved in this? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I really want to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that this is just a cash grab and they don't really, they don't mean the things that they're saying. Right. I really want to believe that. That would be the, yeah. Yeah. Or it's not, or it's far more innocent than we were, were assuming by assuming the worst. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, there that those that's not specific enough to say that, that sexual contact happened. It's the most likely case, but it's yeah. not. Um, we don't really know what the circumstances were. So there may be, and which is why I wanted to get into. There may be reasons why she's like, "Look, this was not what everyone thinks it was." But if it was, why are you still? 
And if you're still with this person because the church says it's bad to divorce, there's a problem with that. I don't yeah. call it teaching or or, or issue within the, within any church, the Catholic that church. Limitation. The same way. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that there's something wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what. Yeah, I don't want to call it a teaching or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, there's a problem with that ethic. Yeah. Now it says the lawsuit claims church leaders failed to tell the couple that if the husband followed church scripture and guidance and confessed his sins, that they would report him to state authorities. Oh, that indicates a desire to cover it up. You didn't tell us that when we told you about this crime, right. we'd be held accountable. That's kind of a confession right there, too. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Well, like— This uh, isn't it, the Catholic Church where they wouldn't ever do that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they're, generally They're confused not. in their religion here. Right, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if the Mormon Church has a—or the, the LDS, I should probably use their, the name they prefer— um, I don't know if LDS has the same uh, idea towards confession that the, the Catholic Church does. Yeah, they, apparently not. They may well, or they... may not fall under that legal um, loophole. I think they get into it later in the article, but I don't know that they do. Right. Well, I'm saying just from their, you know, Catholic doctrine is what happens in confessional stays in confessional yeah. period. Sure. And yeah. yeah, we've talked about that before. The state of Oregon right. um, has a mandatory reporting law that requires workers in certain professions to report suspected abuse or neglect. Mandatory reporters in Oregon include school employees, physicians, licensed professional counselors, and clergy members. Oh. However, the law does have exceptions. Clergy members are not required to report such, such information if the communication is privileged. Uh, mm. So what, how are they defining privilege? Yeah. How are they defining privilege? Um, the, I, the lawsuit claims that Latter-day Saint Scripture requires members to confess their sins. Church doctrine, according to the lawsuit, also requires clergy and members of the church court to maintain strict confidence of such confessions. I think a big problem is just how, oh, slo how sloppy the language is here. Yeah. yeah. It quotes Doctrine and Covenants 58, 42 through 43. Behold, he who has repented of his sins, the same is forgiven, and I, the Lord, remember them no more. By this ye may know if a man repenteth of his sins Behold, he will confess them and forsake them. Yeah, that sounds like legalese. <laughs> yeah, that, that, uh, that also sounds like the same problem with the Catholic Church. Yes, it right? does. Um, of, yeah, all you have to do is, is confess your sins and say you're really, really sorry. Um, there's nothing about an actual behavior change, and there's nothing about protecting the victim from... Uh, any future bad acts. There's nothing about psychology right. in there. Uh, I'm really, really tired of religion saying that their religion trumps secular law. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it well. certainly doesn't trump secular morality. That's for damn sure. Yeah. No. <laughs> Not in any way, shape, or form. That they have any hold on morality. Is they, they show that day in and day out. Yeah. 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 My, my Facebook wall is full of, you know, uh, Christian cultists once again proving they're not as, you know, <laughs> charitable as they would like to think. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you That's if funny. you don't laugh, you're gonna cry. So, yeah. um, you got and, a little more? Uh, no, no. This is. Whoop. And didn't they just get caught with a hundred billion dollars? They didn't. Oh know they had? yeah. Let me let me <laughs> yes, bring they, that one up. They did. That's. Yes, the headline alone is just wonderful out of Newsweek.com. Uh, Mormon church stockpiled $100 billion meant for charities and misled LDS members about donations. Uh, I, I, yeah, whistleblower says. So as this gets researched and, and as they get further into what's happening here. It should be interesting. Uh, as you said before we started the show, we were talking about this article. Fraud does not seem to cover this. Yes, the <laughs> scale, $100 billion? Yeah, Holy well, crap. You're talking about Catholic money yeah. there. Yes. <laughs> Catholic scale <laughs> fraud. Hey, Kevin Oh, uh, God. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, they've just been stockpiling this money for 
I don't know. Yeah, it says. Land, uh, I think it's land and uh, land acquisition. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, complaint primarily. filed by the Internal Revenue Service in November by a knowledgeable church member alleges that a nonprofit supporting organization, controlled by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, used member tithes to amass more than one hundred billion in a set of investment funds, and the church misled members about uses of the money. The complaint may be the most important look at LDS finances in decades, a window into one of the wealthiest religious organizations in the United States and the world. Details of the IRS filing reveal financial assets largely hidden from the church's membership, often known as Mormons, and the public view. 74-page document filed with the IRS and obtained by Religion Unplugged shows that... uh, Ensign Peak Advisors Incorporated owned assets under management grew to more than 100 billion from 10 billion in the last 22 years fueled by a mix of investment strategy and tithe money from church members. So if I'm not correct, one of the reasons why we don't tax churches is because they are supposed to provide services to the poor, um, and those aren't who aren't able to take care of themselves, and if you yeah. can't afford, yeah. churches are assumed to provide a public good that yeah. they don't actually have to demonstrate. Unlike real nonprofits, how, right. how do you? Prov- how are they providing a public good by squirreling away one hundred billion dollars? Well, let's forget the fraud part here. Right. Let's just leave that alone because that's obviously yeah, yeah. bad, and, and that's people being people, which. We're atheists. We agree with that, right? There's no demon making it. Those people do that. How are you contributing to the public good of the United States or Utah or pick a city in Utah? I don't care how specific you want to get. How are you providing public good by squirreling away $100 billion? When by saving souls. So what's a soul worth? <laughs> we don't know because yeah, how many, eBay uh, stopped that <laughs> sale, so we don't really know. <laughs> wow. Uh, but, I mean, but, yeah, but you're you're not buying souls with a hundred billion. <laughs> yeah, you're not you're yeah. not buying. Yeah. There, there's no connection between the souls and the hundred billion. <laughs> uh, we still have. Sure, there's no overhead there. Yeah. Um, we have poorly educated children. We're what thirty seventh now or something like that. And I don't no longer want one, number one in education. Uh, we still have poverty. We still have people who can't afford health care. Uh, what good are they providing by squirreling away that money? Uh, apparently, all I can think of is they are increasing the coffers of the church. Yeah. But what is the public good? How is that good? Uh, well, I'm sure uh, they undoubtedly In the future, do. doubtless, they were going to use it for good things. <laughs> The, but and, I, I suspect that's a future that would never come. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To be fair, to be fair, they undoubtedly do some public good. There yeah. is, however, a serious drawback to that. Uh, for one, defrauding people. Right. And also, uh, their religious beliefs are toxic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they're based on poor epistemology, which leads to a host of other problems for ju- that just make the world a worse place yeah. to live. Yeah. Right. But if they wanted to make Utah a shining example, they could give everyone a million dollars with that kind of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I probably, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, you but could I'm sure do... there's tons of things, smaller things that they could point to. Yeah. Kind of, uh, we, we talked about in our last episode about the Salvation Army. Mm-hmm. Yes, there, there is good that they do. There's also a lot of bad that they do. All right. And you don't necessarily have to take the good with the bad. You can choose something that's just good. Well, I've, I have not heard of an LDS group doing something like feeding the homeless or doing some of these other uh, social good type stuff. You could probably find it if you sought it out, though. Right. Maybe, but I mean, think of how many... We can all name a bunch of Christian religions who uh, and churches who do that. Um, I mean, the the scale on which Christianity in the United States does that type of stuff is is fairly staggering. But uh, within the... I, I have never heard of an LDS church uh, having a problem with feeding homeless or 
um, having too many homeless around. Like a lot of Catholic churches have that problem. Where well, Utah has a has actually a rather large um, LGBT mm-hmm. a homeless population because of their policy. Yeah, because of all the kids that they kick out of their homes. Right. Right. Yeah. So where's that? You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all that all that money that they're defrauding people and squirreling away, that's not helping those people. Right. Because right. they're not holy enough. They're 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 you know, they're dirty. Right. Basically. So where where is the public good for this? I think it's well past time to start taxing churches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If true, as the whistleblower alleges, the size of the LDS church holdings at their uh, at, at EPA, which is their financial mm-hmm. uh partner there would represent a massive pool of capital of interest to the financial world, which pays close attention to the investment moves of large pension funds and major university endowments. Hmm. Yeah, oh, so that's the other question is with $100 billion and in, in I'm assuming a large chunk of that is cash for investments, you can really punish a company you don't like yeah. in the stock market. You, you can yes. also... You can also, you know, resist a lot of social progress as well with that kind of capital behind right. you. Yeah, you can put some money into all kinds of things that, that would support what you want. Um, politicians and campaigns and advertising and marketing, um, whether it's political or not. Um, but just the ability to buy a company and make it go away or stop doing what you don't want it to do because you can buy enough stock in the stock market yeah. to flood the board. Um, that's yeah. really, really scary kind of power. Exhibits in the whistleblower complaint include internal documents, a master plan, and presentation slides from EPA where it describes the purposes of its reserves to support prophetic initiatives, church operating budgets, backstops to pension plans, and collateral for church purposes. What was the prophetic thing you said? Prophetic? Prophetic initiatives. Haven't we already discussed prophecy what the fuck and the... What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> uh, the, I know the leader of their church is considered to be a, a prophet, and I think at, at that level, they're all considered prophets. Yeah, the, like, there's, the, there's the top 10... Uh, or 12. Yeah, yeah the, I don't know the what 12. They are. Damn it. I don't... Yeah, I don't know what the... I always forget the, a yeah. lot of the minutia. Yeah, they say it's to all this, but the filing to the IRS alleges that EPA has made zero religious, educational, or charitable distributions in 22 years. So what are they doing with that kind of money? Amassing more. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because more is the end game. I guess, <laughs> the, yeah. the, the person who dies with the most money wins. <laughs> You know, I, I really think if, if you're a religious person watching this, that you should really thank your God that atheists are more moral than your God um, because you, we could really run, we could really make some money if we all became pastors. Oh, if, <laughs> if it were not for secular morality, humans would have died out long ago. Yeah, I, I really think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, we would all be doomed. Yeah. Uh, it, wow. Did, yeah. Because we're in the wrong business. Yeah. Um, no matter what business we're in, we're in the wrong business. If, if. And here comes the real estate bit. The complaint alleges a series of payments from EPA totaling $1.4 billion to help construct the City Creek Center Mall in Temple Square in downtown Salt Lake City, Utah, which features a retractable roof, luxury storefronts, and simulated creek with river tra- with live trout. The LDS Church and its developers aim to create a new urbanism in downtown Salt Lake City. What? Money, 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 money. So, I, like, I've read the Bible twice, so I'm fairly confident this is in there. Didn't Christ <laughs> yes. get really pissed off with people you who were think. rumping for money? I, okay, but <laughs> he, he Mormonism took a scourge to them, as far yeah. as I know. Yeah, I know Mormon the scourges. <laughs> Flip some tables. You know. <laughs> Mormonism is Christian fanfic, though. It's a new canon. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you for going there. I was really trying not to. <laughs> new rule. Uh, yeah, new yeah. rules. And I mean, it was yes, founded fanfic. by a convicted fraud, so. Yes. 
Yeah, yes. this, is, this is also true. The, the wonderful golden tablets. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. He, yeah. he could read. When, you're, when your church is founded sticking by... Sticking his face in a magic hat. <laughs> uh, a huckster. Like, yeah. 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 This kind of shit shouldn't be too, too uh, surprising. And yet, <laughs> we are surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of hucksters, um, Uh-oh. we've got a clip from the Jim Baker show. Oh, oh no. Do we? Yes. Yes, I, I think we do. Um, do we have that ready to queue up? You know what? Trump is a test whether you're even saved. Mm. <laughs> Only saved people can love Trump. <laughs> no, you got to be really saved. You got to forgive. You got to be able to forgive. You forgive when you're saved. Wow. Oh. Okay. So, uh, Not he's a, a nonprofit. Yeah. Supporting a political person. Yeah. We should tax the snot out of him. Yeah. If he was in Miami, they probably would, because Miami did that to the uh, uh -huh. first Presbyterian. Oh, I nice. Yeah. They hit him with a tax bill, $7 million. Wow. Because it, it, of violating that and supporting mm -hmm. politics. It's a nice so. change of pace. Yeah. Um, yeah. Miami, sure. kind of a surprise. Yeah. Um, but that's nice, but obviously Jim Baker should immediately lose. He didn't get the memo. Yeah. Yeah. He should immediately lose his nonprofit status. Yeah. Is wait, is he a nonprofit though? I, I, I feel like I am making an assumption because he's a, a Christian televangelical preacher. Yeah, I think he runs I think his television show or his his television channel, rather, is oh. not I'm not, not a nonprofit. Okay. I don't think he is not. In which case, what I just mm. said doesn't really matter. Right? Okay. It's, well, it's a moot point right. That point. I, I will give him the benefit of the doubt that he probably doesn't deserve, and assume <laughs> that he's not nonprofit status yeah. and he's just a hack. Um, well, you don't have to assume that he's a hack. We can pretty much just well, prove yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're looking at it. So, Trump is a test. No and boy, is not, he ever? You're not truly saved unless you support him. I so the logic of that, first of all, no true Scotsman fallacy, right off that, yeah, right? Yeah, problematic. Um, I mean, that's that's kid stuff, right? And what makes that true? What makes that statement true? Let's let's ignore the fallacy for a second and say that. It, it, what makes that statement true? What is it about Trump being a test? to make sure that you're saved makes, I mean, what part of that makes any kind of sense? The only way it makes sense is if he's tacit to me, in my own personal opinion, yeah. that he's tacitly admitting that someone who's been married as many times as he has, yeah. that has been, has admitted to defrauding students by calling himself a university, that has admitted right. to all the things that he is legally admitted to, that he's actually done those things and he's really a bad guy. And so the test is you have to trust God because God is using a bad guy. Right. And if we go back to the Bible and we say, well, where do we see this in the Bible? Where has, he's used humans. We can assume that humans are, yeah, you know, sure. fallible by any yeah. stretch of the imagination. But what human has he used that is, has done the things that Trump has done? I can't think of one. Uh, well, I mean, th there is plenty or the equivalent, of, right? Yeah, there, yeah. Or there, there certainly is plenty of uh, biblical figures that you can point to. that are just you know monstrous garbage. Samson comes to mind. The, there's somebody in particular that a lot of evangelicals associate Trump with. I forget his name. Okay. Uh, but but yeah, it man, the the, the Trump apologetics are just getting. Man, they're so tiresome. <laughs> yeah. Well, well our, 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 so and they, but they're saying that, but they will not say that he's a bad man. Right, right. And he's imperfect. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. imperfect, which, which, so basically they're kind of defining evil out of existence. They're, they're saying anything evil that you perceive is merely a test. 
it's ultimately how for the Orwellian greater good. Of them. So yeah. how how <laughs> how can something for the greater good be evil, really? So there is no such thing as evil. Right. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, how and, the and hell does that work? In I, I don't I don't remember Samson being uh, well, having. He's he's a psychopathic killer. <laughs> Well, he, yeah, he, uh, yeah. Okay, I need to go back and look at that again. But uh, he set like three hundred foxes on fire. Oh, really? I yeah, yeah, that. yeah. What? Tie, yeah, ties their all all their tails together and sets them on fire, so that they run through uh, some guy's wheat field and catches his wheat on fire. Oh, what a son of a bitch! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow, yeah, I don't remember yeah, that okay. part of the story. Um, <laughs> I can he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's a freaking serial killer there, yeah. practicing yeah. on the animals first, right. Well, all, literally, because he's running through a wheat field, so, yeah. you know. Good <laughs> grief. It's a serial grain. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> we don't have a, the drum. Ba -ding. <laughs> ba -ding. Yeah. Oh, man. We need to get that. Yeah. Oh, maybe they could add it in post. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <Jesus. laughs> Took uh, me too long to get that. One. Yeah, wow. yeah. I can tell by your faces you didn't get the pun until I said it's a no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Voosh right over oh. my head. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Well played, it's, sir. It's, just, <laughs> it's so hypocritical because. Um, oh God. Yes. We we've talked about it before. I know I've said it before. It it gets so tiresome with the. He defrauded a charity. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's okay to abandon every moral standard that we've ever, uh, you know, propped up over the last several decades as this is the absolute standard that we we hold presidents to. It's it's fine to abandon all of that, right? Because he's, you know, fighting Planned Parenthood. He's somehow yeah, or he's chosen one. I. Yeah. Well, he's also, doing this. I don't and know that. how the hell they arrived at that. He's doing this and that to capitulate to evangelicals. Yeah. So abandoning every moral, uh, so-called standard that we've ever right. propped up is totally fine. Right. Well, he's he's he said several times that he, he has gotten rid of the Johnson Amendment, which is the amendment that says that churches can't. Uh, politic for a politician or right. or yeah. any of that, right? Um, and he says he's gotten rid of it, and yet every expert out there says, no, he didn't. Yeah, he, he can't. Did. Um, right. The only thing he, he can do, which he did, was direct the Department of Justice to ignore those complaints and right. not do anything about it. They already yeah, did no that, No enforcement. Though. Yeah. They already did that. So he's done that for them. He's He said he, he brought Christ back into Christmas. Uh, it's never been illegal. That's meaningless. Yeah. Um... So these things that he says he's done, every single one of them is an obvious lie to anybody he's paying attention. Yeah. Um, right. In terms of that. And yet he does things that are not charitable, that aren't compassionate, that aren't loving to his neighbor. Right. Just in the way he name calls. Yeah. yeah. That is not treating a neighbor like you'd be. Like I think you treat yourself. What it really comes down to is he has appointed, you know, morally repugnant, far right uh, judges that right. are going to vote in the, the in favor of what evangelicals right. want. And and just to be clear, that's we are really speaking for ourselves, not on behalf yes. of the ACA in that's, any way, yeah, shape, or form. That's, that is my read <laughs> personally. Yes, disclaimer. Um, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, but these are things that we can point to and go, he's done this, and things we can point to and go, this is c completely contradictory to what a large amount of Christians uh, believe and say. Right. If if you believe in charity, how do you support a guy who's defrauded a charity? Um, and use that, and by defraud specifically, he used that money for his own purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, how do you support a guy who? does not appear to love his neighbor as himself. Yeah. Um, how do you support any of the things that you say Jesus Christ stood for? How do you, how do, how is he supporting any of that? Yeah. And how are you He's supporting not. He's this guy? He's spitting on it actively. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. What what few good good moral teachings are in your book? He's shitting all over. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Um 
and he's only and and yeah, he says some things, but you go look at what he's done, and it's it's just not. Yeah, you know, if you think lying is bad, um, he actively does that on a regular basis. Yeah, I got news for you. Yeah, <laughs> um, and he's lying about stuff that you think is good. Right. Yeah. He, he did He's not get rid you of the, what you want to hear. Right. He did not get rid of the Johnson Amendment. He did not allow people. He did not make it legal to say Merry Christmas again. Right. Um, you know, it's it's all of this stuff, and it, I don't get. Wait. So you don't remember when Obama passed the law that said you couldn't say Merry Christmas? No. No, I don't. Oh, you must have been in a different universe or a different time. Must yeah. be one of those That's Mandela right. effect things. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so oh, man, okay, yeah, I, I don't, I just don't get the logic and how he says that and how he gets to that, because um, I don't understand how you can su- be a Christian and support somebody like Trump. Uh, it, do, it blows my mind, um, and yet they do. They do. Cog- it's it's cognitive dissonance. Yeah, yeah. You know, someone like my, my my mom is a single issue voter. I get her. She has one issue. She's anti-abortion, period, and a conversation. That's the only thing she cares about. Oh, God. Which is his own problem. But I understand yeah. that. A lot I of people are like I completely disagree yeah. with that. But Jim Baker? Oh, come yeah. on. I'm a single-issue voter. Healthcare. Yeah. You know, one party's trying to kill me, and the other is trying to keep me alive. So <laughs> Basically, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I can understand you making decisions, even if yeah, I, comp- you, I you I base those decisions on that, right? And wanting to live another day, right? Uh, but yeah, it's I don't know, it it I I don't get the logic of the statement. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I mean, like I said, Jim Baker's a hack. Uh, yeah. Obvious, yeah. Obvious, not a true Scotsman. You're not a true Christian unless you support Trump. Right. Come on. So, I mean, with that, uh, we are just about out of time. So, Ooh. yeah, Ooh. We, we have like two minutes left. All right. Do you want to send us out? I can do that. All right. I can do that right now. <sighs> well, I hope they'll like it, said Jim worriedly. Yeah, me too, said Kevin. When will we be back, asked, asked Dennis. Good question, admitted Kevin. We already blew the first Sunday. I'm guessing it should be in one week on the 19th, hazarded Dennis. That gets us back on schedule. Sure, okay. And they all agreed. 